Hello there, I'm Rob Werner with the Walter Cronkite Sports Network, and I'm here at Phoenix Municipal Stadium where today I'm going to sit down and talk with the Arizona State head coach of the baseball team, Tracy Smith, about what it's like to be at the helm of the ASU baseball program. So speaking with ASU baseball head coach, Tracy Smith, and coach, I want to ask you a little bit about some of the day-to-day -day duties of being a head coach that some people don't know. Can you tell us about some things you do behind closed doors that are the head coach's responsibility? Well, I always think it's funny because, um, and I've had numerous times in my career, somebody will say, hey, when it's in the off season, what do you do? And, uh, you know, they think that you just come out and you do the baseball. The actual, truth be told, the actual on-field baseball stuff, if I were to give you a percentage, is probably 10 to 15 percent of what we do. Recruiting, I would say, would be the lion's share of it. But relative to your own team, um, you're a psychologist, you're a dad, you're a counselor, you're a, uh, I mean, all these, all these different roles. But um, a lot of it is the recruiting piece of it. But also, I, I think just building the overall, um, the development of your program, and that can be fun. And I have fundraising, you know, development uh, from that regard. And I'd say all, one of my favorite sayings is, it's easy to run a baseball team, but it's hard to run a baseball program because there's so many other elements that go into that. And you talked a little bit about fundraising. Can you tell us sort of how you got uh, the Sun Devil program here at Phoenix Municipal Stadium? I mean, you know, it's, a, it's an amazing stadium, definitely one of the best in the country. And how do you think you were able to do that? And, you know, people don't really understand that you actually were so instrumental in that process. Well, I probably came in on the second stage of it because... Um, the timing of the job we got here, we invested, and I say we, ASU, had invested a significant amount of money in it. Our next phase is, is we're working diligently for a batting facility, or, you know, and so for the last two and a half years, that's been a huge part of um, the external outreach for us. When you're talking, you know, millions of dollars, that takes time, energy, and a lot of support. But I would have to say it's a combination, you know. Um, we've got a great development par uh, department, you know, Tom Collins or TC as everybody refers to him, has really been good rolling up the sleeves and getting after it. Gabe Cagwin have been very helpful in identifying people that then it's my job to go out and connect and give the message of ASU baseball. So um, I see that a lot of people look at fundraising as, as not fun. I actually enjoy it because I'm a relationships person. So to go out and meet people that are supportive of your program doesn't seem like work to me. And when building a program, you need good coaches alongside you. How instrumental and helpful has it been having Ben Greenspan and Michael Early and Fred Norrie? How much does that impact your program? Well, I think, you know, just even over time, um, you know, you, you, you want people that you can trust and, and that uh, certainly good baseball people. Um, it's not a requirement that someone has played for me. I think it's kind of worked out that way a little bit. But, you know, Ben was with me as a player. Mike was with me as a player. The unique quality of that is, is they know you, they can be that subtle voice to a player to say, okay, he may be saying this or, you know, hey, you need to read into it because they've been around me long enough to know. I think Ben has established himself as one of the top recruiting coordinators in the country as witnessed by, you know, what he's done since he's been here. And what's remarkable about that is um, he's done it in a relatively short amount of time. You know, I'll be on the road and guys will come up to me, whether it's scouts or other coaches, and just say, hey, man, Ben is... Ben is with it. You know, Mike uh, coming in in the volunteer role for us uh, this year uh, is not afforded the same luxuries as the recruiting, but he's a star in the making because he's got such an innate ability to connect with the players and communicate a message. Freddie, um, next Freddie, is he's kind of that, I don't know what it would be, that, that voice in Animal House, you know, or, you know, talking to you. And he's my angel, by the way. Um, but I would call him. Um, probably two or three times a week, even when he wasn't on staff, just to talk about it. He had two sons that played for me, so he knows me. But because we had a coaching change, as you well know, um, in the middle of the season, I wanted someone that was going to come in and just kind of be a stabilizing piece. So, uh, you know, you spend a lot of time together, so you better get along with each other, and I think we do that. And this year, especially with such a young team, how do you kind of manage so many freshmen and sophomores when – you know, you've had some amazing teams recently at, at Indiana coming over and the past couple of seasons at Arizona State. How have you kind of dealt with having a, such a young team? You only have, you had four seniors when you came into the year, no, now only three. How do you go about coaching a younger team? Well, every team is different. I mean, and, you know, and every team dynamic is different. And I think what makes this even uniquely, uh, 
special or different is you're, you're talking about a transition because um, you know while we we've, we've been here there's still that there's some of that element of hey you know coach Smith didn't recruit me or whatever and so it's just but people are people at the end of the day if you if you you bond with with kids or you um, create those relationships it's it's going to minimize that so it is a young team I think with a young team um, there are some things that go hand in hand you know some inconsistencies uh, you know no doubt we're struggling this year I think it's a combination of things youth playing a part of that but um, you know what we're looking for at this point is guy you know the buy-in the effort and for the most part those young guys you know have done a good and you know, and some of the older guys too so it's not I don't look at it as a young old thing I just look at it every team is different with multiple personalities and you've got to find ways to manage that and in terms of being head coach, how do you kind of keep things light and still kind of fun for yourself and fun for the team when you're going through some of the struggles this team has gone through? Well, um, you know, now that I'm in my oh, 20 something, 22nd, 20, I don't even know what it is, 22nd year as a head coach, um, seen a lot, you know, and I'll even, you know, reference again this year, we're having a very, very difficult year. Um, I've been there before, you know, and I understand some of the things, the nuances that come with a difficult year. And, you know, it's not fun when you're losing. I don't think anybody down in that locker room would say it's fun. But you've got to band together. That's the only way that you come out of this. So being able to draw upon those experiences of, of, of having been there, done that, um, I think is very helpful. It also gives you strength and confidence to know you're going to come out on the other side because when I was a younger coach and going through some of this, I would be lying to you if I said there wasn't some of that, okay, is, is this working, you know, are, are we going to get through this? But then when you're sitting in Omaha, you know, and you're, and you're looking at some of the great coaches at a press conference and say, you know what, the system works, it, it gives you great confidence in that. It's been a while since uh, we've kind of had to go through one of these years, but you know what, it doesn't change in, in how you act and interact and being respectful and giving your best effort every day because that's what we're asking out of the kids even though the results aren't and the wins and losses what we want um, you still need to take a mature approach on that and sometimes there's you know outside talk of fans and spectators you know unhappy but how do you sort of block it out knowing you know you've got over 600 wins in your career you got chosen to be the head coach of Arizona State one of the best baseball programs in the nation well you love the passion I mean and sometimes passion is misplaced uh, but I, I would say first and foremost, I think what it demonstrates, whether the, the fan base is positive or negative, it, it, it demonstrates they care. And, you know, that's a good thing. So, you know, I'm a confident individual. I'm a strong individual. What you have to, and I like to have fun with that sometimes, as you know, on Twitter. But what I think, you know, what kind of you chuckle sometimes is, um, and, and you have to put in perspective and just keep doing, they're not there every day. You know, they don't know what's going on in your practice. They don't know the circumstances. So you just, you ha as you, you got to block it out because, you know, while we're all human beings and you have feelings, um, you got to have enough strength and confidence to know, you know what, they're uninformed on some of that stuff. And it's just, it's the passion coming out. And, and, and so you just take that and, and uh, as disappointed as people are right now, I would assume the enthusiasm or whatever, will be that and then some uh, when we're winning. So you take the good with the bad. That's what you have to do in positions like this. Absolutely have to do. And in the coming years, what are you hoping to do at Arizona State? You know, a great baseball program, how do you want to sort of not be remembered because you are still under contract for a number of years, but how? where do you want this program going? Well, I mean, as we're talking, I'm looking out in you know, right center field and I'm looking at the uh, you know, NCAA national championships, and I and I look on there and I see 1981, and, and I and I communicate with Ray Anderson the other day because I know a lot has been made to do about the streaks, and you know, and and I said, look, I didn't come here to keep streaks alive. I didn't come here to, you know, I, I didn't. What I came here to do was to change that banner from 81 to winning a national championship, and with that, I said we're going to do it the right way, and. You know, so how do I want to be remembered? I want to be, you know, remembered for, um, you know, a guy that was, you know, tough, fair, whatever you want to call it, doing it the right way, but got ASU, you know, that, that national championship in recent times that everyone so desperately wants. And, and very truthfully, that's why I came here. And, um, and that has not changed. 
through good and bad and some of this, you know, you, it's, it's, it's a process and you embrace the process and um, we're going to change that banner. That's what we're going to be remembered for. Thanks, Skip.